Today, we're investigating three different mobile projects that failed. In our title story this week, Paragon, the embattled third-person MOBA from Epic Games, is shutting down. Battle Rite and its Royale counterpart would slowly fade into obscurity. Here's a storm is now officially dead. I'm going to show you what each of these games is like to play, why I believe they're struggling today, and how one game has even come back from the dead. So join me as we take a deeper dive into each of these games and ask the question, why did these MOBAs die? First up on our list of unfortunate MOBA failures is of course, Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm was released by Blizzard in 2015 and is a crossover MOBA featuring characters from all their other hit games. Think of it as like Blizzard's version of Super Smash Bros with epic gamer music. When the game first launched, there were pretty high hopes for the project, as well as generally favorable reviews by both critics and players. The main way Heroes differentiated itself from League or Dota was that it was a much more streamlined MOBA experience. For example, you don't have your own experience bar in Heroes of the Storm. Instead, your level and experience are shared across the entire team. Okay, so what level did I just hit? Where do I see my level? Like, I can't even see what level I am. So if I collect XP in one lane, it gets put towards our team's cumulative level bar. Secondly, there's no gold to buy items. Instead, you unlock talents as you level up giving your hero a series of upgrades as the game progresses. Yeah, I have no idea what are the good talents to pick. I'm just kind of picking off a feel. I kept playing Here's the Storm and found myself appreciating all these simpler adjustments more and more. I don't feel uh, completely useless playing this game, which is nice. Like most of the time when you start a MOBA, like when I started uh, Dota, I had no idea what was going on. At least I feel like I can do something in this game, which is a change of pace, I guess. I liked not having to worry about things like last hitting or perfect itemization, for example. Instead, I could just enjoy a more, I guess, relaxing MOBA experience? Ah, oh, Jesus. One differentiating aspect of the game I really liked was that it had multiple battlegrounds instead of just one static map. Each battleground has a different type of objective to play around, adding a lot of variety to every match. For example, the battleground Cursed Hollow has these tributes you need to capture, and whichever team captures three first gets to put a massive debuff on the opposing team for about a minute. There's also the battleground Dragonshire, which allows one of your teammates to turn into this OP Dragonite if you capture these two points on either end of the map. Even though Heroes is definitely a more straightforward MOBA experience when you compare it to the likes of League of Legends or Dota, I still really enjoyed the complexities the game did possess. I wanted to learn more about the optimal talents to take for my character based on the game state. Hey, what talent do I want now? The most efficient ways to move around the map for ganks, and how to take advantage of each of the battlegrounds specific quirks. There was enough substance in the game to keep me hooked, and yet it was simple enough to never feel overwhelming for someone learning its systems for the first time. It's a fun, fast-paced mobile experience that I honestly think is worth giving a try. <laughs> nice, okay. I'm getting the hang of it, I'm getting the hang of it. Which made me wonder after my full day of playing, what the hell went wrong here? This game's fun, I like it. Why is it not more popular? <laughs> Why did they kill it? I don't understand. This is like a well-made MOBA, I think. Because Blizzard announced back in 2018 that it was downsizing its Heroes of the Storm team, a pretty grim sign for the MOBA only three years after its launch. And then in July of 2022, Blizzard made the decision to actively stop development on Heroes of the Storm, putting it in maintenance mode for the foreseeable future. Obviously, Heroes did not meet the expectations or profits Blizzard set out for it and had to make the tough decision to close up shop. In another universe, I firmly believe this game could have been very profitable for Blizzard and a true competitor to League and Dota in the mobile space. But obviously that isn't what ended up happening. And instead, I believe Heroes of the Storm wasn't able to find its place for two main reasons. Number one, Heroes of the Storm was just late to the mobile party. Because the game didn't release till 2015, its two largest competitors had many, many years to build a strong, dedicated, and established player base. And getting those players to convert to another MOBA is a lot easier said than done. MOBAs are a huge time commitment and usually become a big part of people's leisure time. Whether it's casually gaming with your group of friends that also plays the same game, or grinding on the competitive ladder, leaving behind all that time and work you've put into quote unquote your game isn't a very appealing idea. Number two, based on what was said by the community, it sounds like Blizzard did a pretty poor job supporting this game from the beginning, which really frustrated its players. Late updates, poor communication, and balancing issues seemed to plague Heroes of the Storm for a long time, 
and it became obvious that the game's development was not high up on Blizzard's priority list. And with those two reasons, Heroes of the Storm becomes our first game of three in the MOBA graveyard. The thing is though, Blizzard wasn't the only company that tried to release a more simplified MOBA for the masses. As I present to you the second game on our list, Battle Ride. Battle Ride is an arena style MOBA that was released in 2017 by Stunlock Studios. The game consists of two teams in either 2v2 or 3v3 combat. Just like in any MOBA, you pick a particular character who has a unique set of stats and abilities. Except in Battle Ride, there's no leveling up or items to buy. There are also no towers or objectives, except for this one orb that spawns in the middle of the map, giving you some health and another resource called energy which is charged up throughout the game, eventually allowing you to use your powerful ultimate. Get out of here. Get out of here. Another quirk of Battle Right is that once you die, you don't respawn, as the goal of the game is to eliminate every player on the enemy team. If you do that, you win a round. Win three rounds, you win the game. That's it. That's about as deep as the gameplay gets for Battle Right. And to be honest, I really liked it. It was a super simple, arcade style game you could jump into right away and just have a blast with. Nice. Okay. I'm liking this game. This game's kind of fun. It's super simple, but it's just like fun to play, which is a nice change of pace for MOBAs. <laughs> Lots of other people found its gameplay to be intriguing too, as Battle Right sold around 440,000 copies in its first three months, but went on a very steep decline shortly after. Battle right now averages anywhere from 45 to 130 concurrent players, a far cry from its former glory. This was another MOBA that baffled me at first because I got completely sucked into the arena style gameplay right from the beginning. It felt new, intense, and I was really enjoying how it brought a new style of combat to the MOBA genre. For example, you use your WASD keys to move around instead of the traditional right click, and you actually need to aim your auto attacks for the damage to land. But something didn't go right for Battle Rider along the way, and I needed to figure out what that was. Why did so many people abandon this game that seemed so fun, leaving it to essentially be a shell of what it once was? So I played and played and played as I looked for an answer. Damn, I'm really impressed with this game. I don't understand why it's so unpopular. And as I kept playing, I began to notice something. Okay, I think I've come to some conclusions. Uh, I would say, the game is so simple that it doesn't really pull you in like it's really fun at the beginning but there's nothing there that's like keeping me in the game i'm not like invested in it battle right lacks those intricacies and details that makes moba so rewarding and fun to master even though for example heroes of the storm is a simpler moba it still has enough variety and substance to make you want to keep coming back and learn more don't get me wrong battle right is great mindless fun for an hour or two but past that, there really isn't much substance here in terms of a MOBA, which I think is why it struggled to appeal to a more core MOBA audience. I know when I got into hour four or five of playing the game, I was definitely ready to move on to something else. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh my God. I felt like I had seen all Battle Right had to offer, which isn't a good sign for a game's longevity and is probably one of the big reasons why Battle Right is the second game in our MOBA graveyard. This leaves us with one last game to investigate, a game that had far from a traditional death, and that game is Paragon. Paragon was a MOBA released by Epic Games in 2016 as an open beta. The game had a more classic MOBA feel with a 5v5 symmetrical map, three lanes, level ups, minions, gold, experience, you name it. Except it was at a third person perspective, almost feeling more like a hero shooter with MOBA elements. Epic poured tons of their resources into this project, expecting it to be a big hit. Unfortunately though, Paragon really didn't live up to expectations over its first year and a half in beta, and by September of 2017, the game had kind of fallen flat. Whereas another game Epic released around that same time was starting to take the gaming world by storm. With the overwhelming success of Fortnite and the lackluster performance of Paragon, Epic announced that it was starting to move resources from Paragon's development team over to Fortnite in the final quarter of 2017. This process of transferring more and more resources to Fortnite continued until around January of 2018, when Epic made the tough decision to end development on Paragon and fully shift to Fortnite, closing down the servers in April of that year. Epic realized that this project wasn't going to be profitable in the long run, so they cut their losses and moved on. Now, normally this is the part of the video where I tell you how Paragon was essentially murdered by its default dancing cousin, and that it's the third and final game in our mobile graveyard. But that isn't actually how Paragon's story ends. 
because in March of 2018, Epic decided to release all $17 million worth of Paragon's assets for free to use inside the Unreal Engine, giving other studios the chance to remake their own version of Paragon from the ground up. Which is why today, in 2024, six years after Paragon was originally shut down, we have a fully live and revived version of Paragon you can play right now. And it's called Paragon the Overprime. A Korean studio named Netmarble ended up rebuilding Paragon themselves inside the Unreal Engine, acquiring the logo and naming rights straight from Epic, and relaunching the game for its fans with a few changes. Netmarble decided to add in some more, let's say familiar MOBA elements into their version of Paragon, and it became very apparent to me which game they took inspiration from as I was going through the tutorial. Um, one of four attributes, you mean infernal, cloud, mountain, and ocean? <laughs> no! <laughs> I did not look that up beforehand. Fire, water, wind, earth, come on. The summoning orb that allows you to put it into a lane? What League of Legends monster allows you to summon it in a lane? All right, budget Rift Herald, let's go. Press H to summon the underling, okay. Summoning the underling. If this thing charges the tower, I'm gonna lose my mind. No, it does not. Oh my god. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Netmarble basically just took Paragon, slapped some shit straight from League into there, and re-released the game. But honestly, even though my toaster of a barebones League PC could barely load any of the textures into the game, I fucking loved playing it. <laughs> oh my god, the combat feels so good. What the hell, man? Paragon the Overprime is like if a hero shooter and League of Legends had a weird baby. It has the combat, movement, and time to kill of a hero shooter. I like jumping. Jumping in a MOBA, who knew? But the systems and strategy of a MOBA. And in my opinion, it feels really good to play. If you've played both Overwatch and League of Legends like I have, you'd feel right at home in Paragon the Overprime. Oh man, this game feels sexy, woo! It may not seem like it works that well at first glance, and it does take some getting used to, but after my day of playing, I was having a blast. Good night. <laughs> I'm just so happy Netmarble took the time to remake this game in their own vision and bring it back to life for everyone to enjoy. They've proven that even when these MOBAs seem like they're dead or deemed as failures for the reasons we talked about in today's video, they can still offer a place of community and hours of enjoyment for their dedicated player bases. And I hope that all the developers who put their blood, sweat, and tears into these projects that may not have succeeded in the way they originally envisioned can find somewhat of a silver lining in that. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And one of my recent videos, I tried to give away some RP, but unfortunately it went unclaimed. So if you'd like to win some RP, leave a comment down below telling me why you think these games failed or if you're gonna try any of them for yourself with the hashtag free RP to enter.